Jumping into the number five spot of the best budget gaming TV for the Xbox Series X and S is the Sony X85K. Coming in at a price tag of $898 for the 65 inch variant. And if you want to check out any of the five TVs in this video, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. And while $898 for a 65 inch is definitely still budget, it's not the cheapest. And this is not even close to being the cheapest on the list. But for that price tag, what does it give you? Well, firstly, this has four HDMIs with two of those being 2.1 going all the way up to 4K at 120 Hertz with one of those 2.1 ports being an eARC port. So you still have one non eARC 2.1 port and then one 2.1 with eARC. Then the other two HDMIs are gonna be 2.0. Then you have two USBs, an optical audio out, an ethernet, a cable port, and then an IR in. But let's talk game performance. Firstly, this is fully compatible at 4K at 120 Hertz with the consoles. However, there are other TVs on the list that are far cheaper than this. And while I still think it's a great budget TV for the Xbox Series X and S, I don't think it's as good as the others, which is why it's only on the number five spot. There's really nothing wrong with this TV. Now at 4K at 120 Hertz, this has very low refresh rate. It has superbly low input lag with auto low latency mode as all of the TVs on this list do have. Now for ghosting, this does really, really well without much noticeable ghosting at all. There is some slight inverse ghosting, but during gameplay, it's pretty hard to notice, especially to an untrained eye. It's pretty much on par with the number one spot and slightly behind the number three spot on this list. But overall game performance is very good here, but for the price, I think it's not quite as good as some of the others on the list. Now for compatibility, it's fully compatible. That means 4K, 120 Hertz, variable refresh rate and HDR all on at the exact same time. And you can also do 1080p and 120 Hertz with variable refresh rate, obviously no HDR if you're gonna use a 1080p resolution as the Xboxes cannot output HDR at any other resolution other than 4K. Now, one thing to note here is that if you do wanna use a Series S, this doesn't support 1440p at 120 hertz. Kind of strange. Yes, it can do 1440p at 60, but if you want to do a 1440p high refresh rate gaming with your Series S, this is not the TV. Just skip it. Move on to the number four spot. That's where that one really, really brings it. But let's talk about the panel. Is it still pretty? I mean, I, I don't think I'm the only one who wants to game on a gorgeous panel. Well, yeah, it's pretty good. This is a VA panel, which means you're going to get not the greatest viewing angles, but you will get deep blacks natively. Brightness and HDR here are also good. This is bright enough to keep away most reflections and make the image pop, but when compared to the three, two, and number one spot, this is definitely a little bit dimmer. HDR brightness here is okay, peaking at about 540 nits across the board, and that does include the highlights. So while this is nice and bright, and if you're in a bright room, don't worry about it, but the highlights don't exactly just make this a very dynamic looking image. All right, but now let's talk colors. As far as out of the box accuracy, while not perfect, the color temperature out of the box was pretty dang close to a 6,500 Kelvin target. Overall, it's a really impressive panel, just a bit overpriced for what you get comparatively to others on the list. And that point continues to be pushed with the local dimming and contrast ratio. This doesn't have any local dimming. So the native contrast ratio is all you're gonna get, which is good at 7,500 to one. So you're definitely gonna have a deeper blacks than like an IPS-based TV panel, but they're just not gonna be as deep and inky as others on the list. However, the flip side of that is that the quality of the panel is really good. You have no blooming, black uniformity is very, very good. And overall, it's a very polished panel without any really weirdness going on. There's no problems with it. It's just a little bit high on the price. Now, lastly, to finish it up, this uses Google TV, which is the best OS for smart TVs out there. So no problems there. But with that, let's move on to the number four spot, which also happens to be the best budget TV for the Xbox Series S, the TCL Q6 coming in at a price tag of $699.99 for the 65 inch variant. But this is not really the normal price as I think it's pretty consistently on sale for $499.99 for the 65 inch variant. There's other variants, check the links below if you wanna see all the prices, but 500 bucks for a 65 inch is a very good price. Now, what does that get you? Well, it gets you three HDMIs, not four, interesting, yes, and they're all 2.0, but just wait, this TV has a trick up its sleeve that makes this so good, especially for the Series S. In addition to those HDMIs, this has one USB type A, an ethernet, cable, optical audio, composite in, and then a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. But now let's get into the gaming performance. This is where it brings it. This natively hits only 60 Hertz, and has variable refresh rate and ALLM, which is auto low latency mode, but just wait, because if you want high refresh rate gaming, yeah, this can still do it. Even though this is only 60 Hertz natively, this uses resolution having to get 1440p and 1080p resolutions at a 120 Hertz refresh rate. So that means you can go 1440p or 1080p with both the Series X and S. And if you're like, well, does the resolution having 120 Hertz look like 120 Hertz? Then yeah, if you're going for lower input lag, that 
buttery smooth visuals, yeah, this is going to give you the same visualization as 120 hertz because it is 120 hertz. It's actively outputting 120 hertz. And at 120 hertz with ALLM on, the input lag is very, very low. This is low enough where you can use it as a PC monitor, uh, but obviously we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be using this with the Xbox. Now, one of the things here is ghosting is definitely the worst on the list. It's not horrible. It's definitely not horrendous. And for many of you, it's probably a non-issue. Now, in bright scenes, like if you're gaming in bright scenes, you won't even notice it. It's not very noticeable at all. Uh, but what happens is in those darker scenes, you get a little bit of color separation. I call it red and green ghosting and a little bit of artifacting and just standard ghosting. So if you go in really dark areas where you're really hitting those blacks and they're mixing with other colors, that's when you're going to get ghosting. So this is something you'll have to weigh for the price. I still think it's a very, very good value proposition, especially for 120 hertz. But if you are someone who's super annoyed by ghosting, this might not be the TV for you. Now for compatibility, let's go over it. For the Series X and S, you can do 4K at 60 hertz with variable refresh rate and HDR. Then you can do 1440p and 1080p at 120 hertz with variable refresh rate on, but no HDR. This is not because of the TV. This is because Xbox does not allow HDR at any other resolution other than 4K. But how pretty is the panel? Well, firstly, this is a VA panel. So again, good native contrast ratio, but not the best viewing angles. Not horrible like a TN panel. Uh, but when you move to the sides, it does wash out slightly. So the middle is the best viewing experience. Now, Brightness and HDR very consistently hits just shy of 500 nits. This is bright enough to make this a very enjoyable watching experience in brighter rooms, but highlights don't pop as much as others on the list. This is similar to the Sony. HDR here is the same story. Highlights don't pop, but the image is still very, very pretty, but not as dynamic with those super bright highlights that some of these TVs do have. Now, unlike others on the list, colors were undersaturated out of the box and the gamma was a little too high. Hi. Now, this is very, very easy to adjust. You change the gamma super quick, and then I just saturated the image a little bit. And once you do those, it's golden. It looks great. It's a beautiful and vibrant TV, but that's just something you have to do as soon as you get it. I would just increase that saturation. This is a non-issue, and you don't have to go into any special software. It's just in the menu system where the settings itself. So it's very, very easy to do. Now, let's talk contrast ratio and local dimming. Firstly, this has no local dimming. You do have to bump it up slightly in price to get local dimming, but its native contrast ratio is pretty good at 8,000 to 1. While the black level is very good for not having local dimming, you're just not going to get those extremely inky blacks that the number two and number one spot have especially. Benefit again though, similar to the Sony, is you're not going to get any blooming around subtitles and things like that. For the OS, this is again using Google TV here. It's a bit laggy on startup, but overall not bad and it doesn't have any extreme lag spikes or anything like that. But with that, let's move on to the number three spot, which is the Vizio Quantum Pro coming in at a $699 price tag for a 65 inch. This is where you're getting full support for the Series X and S, but it's in that really sweet spot of a price point. Now this has four HDMI's with three of them being 2.0 and only one of them being 2.1. Then you have one USB and optical audio cable ethernet, but no 3.5 millimeter audio jack here. So that's kind of an oversight, I think, but not a big deal. All right, but now let's get into the gaming performance. This natively hits 120 Hertz and again has variable refresh rate and extremely low input lag. On top of that, this has extremely low ghosting, the lowest on the list and the best viewing angles which is expected as this is an IPS panel. So you get great viewing angles. The colors look fantastic. The colors on this are really gonna look the best on the list. IPS panels over VA panels always just have the best looking colors. Something that you can't really just look at on a spec sheet. You have to go in person and just look at it and they look different. So if you game with a lot of friends or you have a wide array of seating or you game from an angle, this is gonna be the best one on the list for viewing angles for sure. For compatibility, like I said, fully compatible with the Series X and S at 4K, 120 Hertz with HDR and variable refresh rate on at the same time. This can also do 1080p at 120 Hertz with variable refresh rate but this again cannot do 1440p at 120 hertz. But let's talk about the beauty of the image because this is where I think it really starts to look absolutely stunning even though these are budget TVs. The three, two, and number one spot are all beautiful TVs. Now, like I said, this is an IPS panel, but this has a quantum dot layer, which increases that color gamut over the two previous TVs. Because this is an IPS panel, you won't get as deep of inky blacks as the previous two TVs without local dimming on because this does have local dimming with it switched on, it does do better than the two previous TVs. So that is something to keep in mind. Now, brightness and SDR is a step above here, hitting 600 nits full screen brightness with highlights hitting just shy of a thousand nits. So this is fantastic. 
not only for vibrancy, keeping reflections away, just overall beauty and the dynamics of the image is very, very beautiful and it has depth to it. I really like that. Now, HDR performance here is also good, hitting about 570 nits of full screen brightness and up to about 900 nits in the highlights, which is on par with the number two and one spot. As for colors, while this is definitely not perfectly calibrated out of the box, it's not wildly off at all. The big thing here is the very wide color gamut, and this is something you notice immediately over the number four and five spots. Colors are extremely vibrant and playing games in HDR is super, super pretty. If you're really focused on how beautiful your panel is, this one is going to bring it. You're gonna be happy with it. With that said, let's talk about local dimming and contrast ratio. Because this is an IPS panel, this is only hitting about 1600 to one. That's 1600 to one. That's not very good. That means your blacks are gonna look blue, but this does have local dimming. And it's not just edge lit, it is full array local dimming. With the local dimming on, this brings the contrast ratio to about 15,000 to one. So about double those previous five and number four spots. So that is very, very good. That's gonna give you significantly deeper blacks. Now the dimming zones here, there's not a ton of them and they don't do the best job in the world, but it's still for sure worth keeping it on and it definitely does help with that contrast ratio a lot. So while it's not the best implementation of local dimming, it still does a lot for this TV. Now for the OS here, this is using Vizio's own OS, which honestly isn't the best. It feels kind of dated, but at the same time, if you're gonna be hooking up a Series X or S to this, I don't know how much that actually matters. But with that, let's move on to the number two spot. This is where they get so, so good. This is the Hisense U7K, coming in at a $1,049.99 price tag for the 65 inch, but again, it's a lot of money, but it's typically on sale for around 800 bucks. That's what I got mine for. Now, ports here are great, having two HDMI 2.1s and two more HDMI 2.0s that can do 4K at 60 hertz, two USB type A's, an optical audio out, 3.5 millimeter audio out, a cable port, ethernet, and composite in. As for gaming performance, as we expect, this can natively hit 120 hertz. This also has FreeSync Premium Pro, which means you can have HDR on and variable refresh rate on at the same time. And again, this has extremely low input lag, which has helped with auto low latency or ALLM. As for ghosting, there is some, but it's really mainly with the black or darker colors against darker backgrounds. So similar to the TCL Q6, but this is significantly better here. Outside of this, ghosting is not very present, which is great, but definitely more ghosting than the Vizio and the number one spot, but not by much. Now, like I said, this is fully compatible with the Series X and S with variable refresh rate, HDR, and 120 hertz at 4K all at the same time. This can also do 1440p at 120 hertz and 1080p at 120 hertz with variable refresh rate on. Now, where this starts to get much more special is the panel itself. This is a mini LED lit VA panel with a quantum dot layer. Now, if you don't know what that means, that means the backlight has mini LEDs, which means full array local dimming with a ton of zones. This brings the SDR brightness up to a very, very good 700 nits of brightness, but full screen brightness is gonna be around 500 to 600 nits, which is still very, very good. Brightness in HDR here is fantastic and a bit brighter than Vizio's, hitting all the way up to that 1000 nit rating, but really full screen brightness will be around 650 nits, which is still very, very good. This makes the image very vibrant and beautiful, Colors here are great, they are vibrant, and the accuracy out of the box is quite good here, probably the best on the list. This is factory calibrated, so colors should arrive very, very good. So if that's important to you, well, this is good. All right, now contrast ratio and local dimming. Let's talk about it because this is very good on this TV. The local dimming here set to anything but high doesn't really do much. So set it to high and just leave it. This has the most precise local dimming and the most zones of any of the TVs on the list. That being said, it has a contrast ratio with local dimming on of about 45,000 to one. So the blacks are significantly deeper than all the others on the list previously, not the number one spot though. That one does take the cake. But this has a bunch of zones. So the accuracy, the speed, the amount of times local dimming is actually going to be working well in game is a lot, most of the time. So this creates a very beautiful, refined image. Now for the OS, this does use Google TV and there's no real problems with lag or anything like that. So yeah, this is great. But with that, let's move on to the number one best budget gaming TV for the Xbox Series X and S. This is the TCL Q7, coming in at a $999.99 nine price tag for the 65 inch variant. These do also go on sale, so check the links below. Now for the ports, this has two HDMI 2.1s with two more HDMI 2.0s with one of those 2.0s being eARC. This has an ethernet, cable, USB type A, 
AV in and a 3.5 millimeter audio out and then an optical audio out. Now for gaming performance, obviously this hits 120 hertz at 4K with variable refresh rate and HDR. And obviously this has auto low latency mode. This again has extremely low input lag and feels amazing for gaming. Ghosting is also very good and definitely a step above the Hisense, although not quite as good as the Vizio, but it's really, really close. Overall, game performance honestly blew me away. The image is incredibly beautiful. The local dimming is snappy, even in games. Colors are beautiful. Input lag is superbly low. There's very low ghosting, and you get that high refresh rate goodness. Let's talk about that. What is this compatible with the Series X and S? Well, it's fully compatible, again, with everything on at 4K at 120 hertz. You can also do 1440p at 120 hertz and 1080p at 120 hertz with variable refresh rate on. But the biggest thing with this panel is while the game performance is solid, but a lot of the others on the list are completely solid as well, the thing with this one is the panel is so, so beautiful. The panel type here is a QLED, which is a VA panel with full array local dimming and a quantum dot layer to increase that color coverage. Brightness here is great, hitting around 550 nits of full screen brightness, but in the highlights going almost up to 900 nits of brightness, and that's just in SDR. This TV's picture stands out from the others on the list. This keeps away all of the reflections, maintains a very, very vibrant and bright picture throughout the day's lighting. But let's talk HDR. In HDR, the bright, colorful scenes look especially awesome on this TV, and in game mode, the display gets even a little bit brighter while slightly less accurate, it's probably what you want for gaming, just a little bit more beautiful and vibrant. Colors are similar to the Vizio and the Hisense due to that quantum dot layer. And it's definitely one of the more beautiful TVs you can buy at this price point. But let's get to one of my favorite parts and that is the contrast ratio and local dimming. Firstly, this has full array local dimming and with local dimming set to high, this brings the contrast ratio to a whopping 80,000 to one. This makes the blacks super, super deep and inky black. And this is really the thing that separates it in terms of its overall beauty and just dynamics of an image. You have those bright popping highlights and then you have those deep, deep inky blacks, but you still have great brightness, full screen. It's just a beautiful image. Now for the OS, this uses Google TV and it's absolutely solid. One other thing to note is that the remote actually has backlit buttons, which are motion sense, which is cool. But again, if you wanna check out any of the five TVs in this video, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. I personally have bought and reviewed and tested all of these TVs and the TCL Q7 is the one I've used the most. That's also in the number one spot, so it makes sense. But yeah, any of these TVs are great. Q6 is amazing for the Series S if you wanna do 1440p 120 hertz gaming or the Series X. They both game incredibly well on that. But yeah, this is a consumer tech review and I'll see you guys in the next video.